one of the first things that existing users will notice upon launching Toast 11 is the new assistant that contains projects divided up into categories. Data, audio, video, copy, and convert. Now by default, we only see the most common project types, each one with a short description. But to view the list in its entirety, we just need to select View Advanced Projects in the drop-down menu to the right. And, as you can see, image file and video TS folders have appeared. Now let's go back to the Video tab, select DVD Video, and click Finish to get to the main window. Before we get into the Toast interface and workflow, I want to point out the categories to the top. These are the same as in the Assistant, so changing our project once inside the main window is as simple as clicking on one of them and choosing a project type in the drop-down menu to the left. Let's go ahead and name this disk Europe 2010. The first thing we need to do is add some video to the project, and we can do that using the Media Browser which helps us browse our system. Note that it's now embedded into the main window, but clicking on the small arrow button pulls it right out and gives us the floating Media Browser that we're used to. The Data tab allows us to search for files on our computer just as we would using the Finder, but also take note of the Spotlight search. For complete access to our iTunes library, we can use the Audio tab. We can browse through the entire collection or choose an iTunes playlist. Next, the Video tab offers tons of options for importing movies. We have the ability to import iMovie projects and events, read straight from an unprotected DVD, take advantage of ITV, Include shows transferred from TiVo, take footage right off of an AVCHD camera without any long import process, and even access videos from web sources such as YouTube. And last but not least, the Photos tab gives us fast access to iPhoto, Aperture, and Lightroom. We're creating a video disc, so let's go back to the Video tab, choose the Movies folder, and drag and drop all of the files right to the content area to add them to the project. We can also add files by clicking on the plus button below or just drag and drop them right from the finder. Removing a file is as simple as selecting it and pressing delete or clicking on the minus button below. Now the appearance of the content area greatly depends on the project type. In this case, we have a thumbnail, some information about each file, as well as an edit button that lets us trim a clip, and an AU filter button that gives us some audio effects. So once the video files are in the project, we need to set up the properties in the options area to the right. For video discs, we can choose a menu style, quality settings, and more. But all of these options are actually project specific, so they will vary. The last thing we need to do is choose a disc type and to double check that we've stayed within the limits of the disc capacity. We can do all of this in the section right under the content area. Here we have a space indicator that visually shows us how much data we have in relation to the size of the disk. So if it doesn't reach the right edge, we're good to go. We can change the disk type using the drop-down menu to the right, and as you can see, the gauge reflects this change. Next, if the project is disk-based, there is the option to choose a recorder, eject the disk, set up burning properties, and create multiple copies. That's really all there is to it. In just a couple of steps, we are ready to burn our disk. So let's press the burn button. At this point, if there is no disk in the drive, Toast prompts us to insert one, and then it gets right to it. Now this was just a general overview of Toast 11 and the basic workflow. To get an in-depth look at burning video disks, audio CDs, data backups, and converting media, be sure to check out the other tutorials. See you then.